one of the things that we discussed with the board today, uh, the idea of getting a hackathon. So those of you in industry that are looking for partnerships in terms of providing data uh, and for the students to be able to engage with that, also for longer term agreements uh, with some projects you might want to have us help with, uh, make sure you stop by, either talk to me, talk to Esra, talk to Jose about it. Uh, with that, uh, let's start the oral blitz presentation. Uh, Sachi will introduce the students. All right, while the students line up, I'm going to uh, give you a brief outline uh, for what is to follow. One of the things in computational science that we pay close attention to is that our students not only do good science and engineering, but also learn how to communicate it effectively, right? So today's event, which we have titled Applied Computational Science and Engineering Sh Student Showcase, is where they communicate their research to you. But the best quote goes to Shakespeare when he says, brevity is the soul of wit. So the first part of this presentation is where they summarize their posters in one minute. That way you can, out of the 27 posters, decide which ones you want to prioritize and pick on those first. So with that said, the first uh, presenter is Priscilla Kelly. Priscilla? Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Priscilla Kelly, and I am a doctoral student working with Dr. Luba Kuznetsova in the physics department. Our lab focuses on the synthetic uh, composite materials, commonly called metamaterials. And our main motivation in studying these type of materials is to develop faster and smaller devices. And much of the research in this field aim, use, aims to do this using silver and gold. However, both of those metals are very expensive and tend to introduce high losses. Our approach using, uses aluminum doping, which is more cost effective and can lower the losses but we haven't lowered them completely. In the work I'll be presenting today, we'll look at suppressing the sidebands that accumulate in the, through these distortions as it travels through our material. If you'd like to hear more about how we did it and how our materials might end up in your next iPhone, please come and see me on poster three. Hi, I'm Jordan. I'm a third year PhD student in computational science. I work in Dr. Johnson's group studying nuclear structure. My work this year is a little different. It's on machine learning to assist load balancing in large parallel codes. So load balancing is a ubiquitous problem in high performance computing, and it's often constrained by physics in scientific codes. This work uses state-of-the-art machine learning techniques to assist load balancing in highly parallelized runs of our nuclear shell model code. The code breaks up work into discrete bundles of operations, which you can see here in the blue or purple blocks. Uh, the code breaks up work into discrete bundles of operations, which are then distributed over individual processes in the computer. This relies on an internal prediction of bundle runtime, and due to errors in these predictions, the distribution of work can be quite uneven, as you see in the second panel, causing inefficiency in the run. I've employed a supervised ensemble classification to predict runtime of bundles by their physical features within the calculation. And if you'd like to uh, know more, I'll be at poster four. So, hi everyone, my name is Ryan Spikowski. I am a uh, third year doctoral student with the CSRC. My research is in computational nuclear physics, and I work with the SDSC physics department with Dr. Kelvin Johnson. Um, what we kind of aim to do is sort of uh, cast the many body problem as a matrix eigenvalue problem, and that lets us get a wave function. And what I do is something similar to analogy to the fast Fourier transform break that wave function up and see if it can find some patterns. So, if you're interested in seeing um, some insights into collective nuclear structure, then come on down to poster 15. So, thank you. Uh, 
afternoon. My name is Abraham Flores, and I'm here to talk about uh, quantum Monte methods and their application to nuclear reactions. For two decades, ab initio nuclear many body theory has primarily focused on the bound state properties of nuclear. <laughs> However, nuclear collisions also provide a meaningful probe uh, of the nuclear Hamiltonian. At the same time, uh, the properties in, uh, at the same Nuclear collisions are necessary for astrophysics and tests of fundamental interactions. This is where Dr. Nola and I come in. We're developing a method for computing nuclear reactions within the framework of quantum Monte Carlo. Starting from neutron scattering from tritium, this simple system pre presents many obstacles um, that we would find in heavier systems. Um, so we solve them here first. If you'd like to hear about the techniques we employ and the obstacles we face in solving this problem, Please, please visit me at uh, post number 18. Hi, my name is Matthew Portman, and I work with Dr. Wayne Hayes at the University of California in Irvine, and I'm a second year uh, PhD student. So our group works with a program called SparkFire, which analyzes images of spiral galaxies to identify the spiral arms in each galaxy, and therefore classify them. Currently, our algorithm uses computer vision techniques such as iterative Gaussian fits as well as pixel clustering to determine the log spiral shapes in the arm segments. We then overlay those shapes and give them back to the user. Currently, our, uh, excuse me, for upcoming work with SparkFire, we intend to integrate a program called GalFit, which is a nonlinear least squares fitting algorithm used to optimally fit a function to, in this case, the galactic structure in the images. We anticipate that upon integrating GalFit, we will be able to refine our results and then intend to fully automate the pipeline such that we can batch process large sets of images like those used in the Galaxy Zoo. From there, we plan on exploring other galactic phenomena such as galaxy formation, galactic rotation, and dark matter. If you'd like to learn more, uh, you can see me at poster 19. Thank you very much. My name is Oliver Gorton, and I work with uh, Dr. Calvin Johnson in the physics department. I'm a first year PhD student in the computational science program. Um, so if you come to my poster, I'll explain my research about computing the temperature and entropy of the atomic nuclei, so the center of atoms. I'm using uh, both classical statistical physics and quantum information theory to compute the temperature and entropy of atomic nuclei. I'm also using entanglement entropy to compute the same thing. Uh, which hasn't been done before. So these calculations demonstrate thermalization in atomic nuclear wave functions, and they offer insight into the effectiveness of our representations of those nuclei. Uh, this kind of analysis can also uh, tell us how to better represent these systems so that we can compute them more efficiently with computers and save computer resources. If you want to learn more about these topics, uh, come see me at poster number 25. Thank you. My name is Eric Medvedev. I'm a second year computational science PhD student working with Dr. Zhao Bai Liu. And you'll see that my slide is a little bit sparse. I kind of want to make it more about the picture and less about the words. Uh, so currently what we're doing is we're researching a large scale deep tracking object localization and mapping system. It's in the preliminary stages, but for most of, well, for most of recent history, uh, tracking, mapping, and all these different kind of methodologies have been using traditional approaches that you may see in photogrammetry. But now what we're trying to do is we're trying to merge the detection, localization, mapping, and object tracking and re-identification part of this pipeline with deep convolutional neural networks. Um, and this way, you no longer have to rely on the traditional feature-based approaches, but you can apply, rely on the do you know, deep convolutional neural net. If you want to learn more about my project or what I'm working on, uh, please see me at poster number 23. Uh, we're actually counting sharks. Podiums are not my friend. Hi, I'm Diana Lee. I'm in Tony Lucas' lab, which is part of the Viral Information Institute here at SDSU. Uh, we study bacteriophages, which are viruses that prey on bacteria. Um, a bacteriophage depends heavily on its capsid or its shell that holds all of its important information. 
And so it is our hypothesis that if you study the major capsid protein gene in these bacteriophages, it should tell us a lot about the bacteriophage structure at large. We use statistical learning methods such as random forest, and we find that we can indeed say a lot about that structure. So if you'd like to know what we found and how we did it, please see me at poster number 10. Now it's pretty clear that in a room full of so many intelligent and highly educated people, there's no way that you're going to fall for the one-size-fits-all hoax. Clearly, different shaped people, different shaped clothes, right? The same should be true for viruses. My name is James Mullinex, and I'm a PhD student at Computational Science Research Center, working out of Antonio Luque's lab, uh, along with the VII, and we're studying the geometry of viral capsid uh, and and uh, isosahedral shapes therein. So the work starts with Watson, Crick, Crick and Watson, excuse me, of uh, DNA uh, helix notoriety, and they predicted a model in which a single protein would tile 60 of them around a capsid with isosahedral symmetry. But that only works for small viruses, so Casper and Clue came and said, what about the bigger viruses? So with their triangulation number, they expanded that. We currently have expanded the number of lattices all the way up to eight, and we have a very beautiful tailor fit, beautifully comfortable shirts for our viruses. If you'd like to see, learn more about our new lattices, please come see me. I'll be at 27. My name is Misha Kutzman, and I'm a second year PhD student in computational science here at SDSU. Under the guidance of my advisor, Professor Jerome Gilles, I'm investigating signal processing techniques on epileptic EEG recordings. The aim of my research is to improve the processes of seizure detection and prediction in order to assist each patient with disease management and improve the quality of life for the estimated 65 million people worldwide living with some form of epilepsy. To achieve this goal, we are experimenting both with how the EEG signal is pre-processed, as well as with how these resulting extracted features are classified by various machine learning schemes. Please visit my poster entitled Improving Epileptic Seizure Detection from EEG Signals, a Patient-Specific Approach at Station 2 to learn more. Thank you. As humans, uh, we all have uh, very unique, uh, different biological um, traits, as well as like how we uh, learn new different things. Um, this can help. This uh, can make doing observational studies rather difficult. Um, I'm Tristan Hillis, and I work with Dr. Juan Juan Fan in the Stats Department on my thesis. Um, I'm a second year master's, and uh, where I'm working to enhance an observational matching algorithm. So whenever you have a group that has pre-existing conditions and you'd like to map, map back to a control, uh, we need to employ a matching algorithm to uh, reduce the biases across these two groups. Um, and in particular, when it comes to missing data in these groups, uh, this, this provides a unique challenge. So if you would like to learn how we solve these issues, especially the missing data part, come to poster six. Thanks. Hi, I'm Caitlin McNair, and I work with Rob Edwards in doing bioinformatics. And I'm here to present work I did writing software to annotate the genes in phages. And it has many applications in biocontrol and antibioterrorism and phage therapy. The paper just got accepted on Monday to bioinformatics. The software is open source and has already been adopted by Patrick. And it works really well, so if you need more with phages or genes, come talk to me. Hi, my name is Pete Ewell. I work with uh, Naveen Vadia in the disease modeling lab. Uh, HIV has no cure, but there are very effective antiretroviral treatments. And the work I'm presenting today has to do with what happens to patients after they stop a regimen of that treatment. So after they stop, they can either experience a viral rebound where they return to a viral load similar to what they had before treatment, 
or they can enter a state of an effective cure, which is a very low viral load, which is what we like to see. So which compartment that goes into depends very much on the strength of their immune system and the viral, viral population at the time the treatment has ended. And so we've been working on developing a model that will predict that and be able to determine which category they go into. Uh, the work I'm based up, I work on uh, also incorporates morphine and how morphine or other drugs of abuse, uh, heroin, cocaine, affect those dynamics. So I'm at poster 11. Please come see me. and uh, my poster is about spatiotemporal graph inference. Uh, the structured representation of data and underlying system as graph is preferred in many applications, but often not readily available. The goal is to develop a method to infer time-varying graphs. In today's poster, we present a generic model that can be used to infer both instantaneous and dynamic connections between the entities using multivariate time series data. Please visit me at poster number nine if you want to know more about the methods and the results. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Luo. I am the third year PhD student here at CSRC, major in computational science and statistics. So my professor is Dr. Jun Jun Fan. Our current work involves in uh, improving the algorithm to be able to estimate individualized treatment effects using observational data. So apparently for the same treatment, different people can respond differently and have different uh, in, uh, treatment effects. So estimating individualized treatment effects and providing individualized personalized treatment plan is no doubt very meaningful and attractive. However, it is challenging to do the estimation because we can never observe both the treated and untreated outcome for any individual units. And the situation is further complicated when we are dealing with observational data due to self-selection bias or confoundings. To address this problem, we propose to integrate propensity score into the tree growth process and we grow the tree called the cultural effect of random forest of interacting trees. And the simulation results uh, shows our uh, algorithm has a superior performance in the terms of uh, prediction accuracy and a variable importance ranking. If you want to know more about this exciting and interesting research, please stop by my poster number 17. Thank you. Um. Hi, my name is Adrian Cantu. I'm a PhD student at Dr. Robert Delors lab. Um, so as you might all know, phages are the most abundant entity, biological entity on the earth. There are more phages than all other organisms combined. Yet, when you look at the genome of a phage, using for example CAGE2, around 50 to 90% of the gene have unknown function. Um, the main cause is that most targets we use to find function relies on homology, the idea that they have a common ancestry, and that's not the case for phages. So in this project, we use machine learning to try to find these, capsi these structural proteins. Uh, so if you want to know more, go to poster number 22. And if you brought your favorite phage protein, we can annotate it using our fine website. Thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Shreyas. I'm a first year PhD student. Uh, so my poster is on UAV swarm mobility for search and rescue operations. Uh, so unlike traditional UAVs, which uh, operate in small groups and are usually controlled from a central station, we are looking at UAV swarms, which are autonomous and distributed. Uh, and these swarms are consist of small, uh, a large number of small UAVs. So we are trying to model uh, mobility, we're trying to do a mobility model which work for these dynamic uh, UAV swarms. And we are looking into, we are investigating using digital pheromone maps and uh, UAV uh, flocking behaviors to do this. So if you're interested to learn more about this, please visit me at poster number 20. Thank you. Hi, 
Hello everyone, my name is Chris Lennig and I am a second year PhD student at the CSRC. Compartmental models provide a simplistic framework to mathematically represent the complex dynamics of virus transmission. In vector-borne diseases, spatial and temporal heterogeneity often play a significant role in these dynamics. Attempting to model the impact of heterogeneity in a compartmental model often results in an approach that is more complex and harder to analyze. In our research, we leverage the simplicity of, an S of a compartmental model to explore the potential impact of heterogeneity on virus transmission without explicitly modeling factors that contribute to heterogeneity. We ran 9,000 simulations of a simple SEIR dengue virus transmission model with different values of parameters known to vary over space and time. Final results are presented in grids, as seen here, that show the change in cumulative infections per capita across different parameter value combinations. Please see me at poster 26 to learn more. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Angel Boada. I'm a PhD student in computational science here at CSRC. And basically, the focus of my, of my research is to explore the viability of mimetic operators on overlapping grids. Mimetic operators uh, provide us with a mathematical foundation for solving partial differential equations um, <clears throat> with a uniform order of accuracy up to an eighth order. And on the other hand, uh, overlapping grids allow us to solve problems that involve complex geometry and also moving particles. Um, for more information regarding mimetic operators and overlapping grids, please consider me at my poster number 21. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shivam Garg. I'm a second year PhD student at the CSRC. Well, the current trend shows a huge number of increase in uh, smart devices and online applications running on them, such as video conferencing, web broadcasting, multiplayer gaming, etc. The quality of such applications is determined by the, uh, by the bandwidth utilization and the delay experienced at the user's end. In today's presentation, I'll talk about the challenges in real-time communication and our proposed solution. I would like to have a fruitful conversation with you at poster number 16. Thanks. Hi. On a movie night, would you like to watch a low-definition video or a ultra-high definition video? Unfortunately, irrespective of the multimedia quality that we achieve over our internet, we end up paying our service providers with the same amount of money. My name is Krishna and my research is focused on quality of experience sensitive pricing framework for wireless multimedia communication. So in this uh, research, we have developed a new pricing framework that we have applied to a traditional uh, service model in internet, where there are content providers like Netflix and Hulu, and wireless carriers like AT&T and Sprint, and mobile users. Our simulation results show that, that a proposed, uh, so a proposed framework yields better utilities to all these three uh, players of the game uh, by using the, uh, than the traditional uniform pricing method. To know more about my research, please see me at poster number 13. Thank you. Hi, I'm Harish Ram Natarajan. I work under Dr. Gustav Jacobs. My work here is a numerical simulation of chemically reactive turbulent flows. These flows occur in several critical and industrial flow applications like high-speed jet engines, volcanic eruptions, explosions, etc. Numerically, one of the successful methods to solve them involves large eddy simulations where the large-scale flow features are solved using higher-order spectral element methods and the small-scale reactions and small-scale flow features are accounted for using probabilistic methods. Typically, these small-scale features are solved using Lagrangian Monte Carlo methods, which are which are computationally expensive to track across different elements. Here we develop a semi-Lagrangian method which keeps these particles local and hence this code could be easily parallelized and we develop a higher order method. To know more, visit me at poster number 12. Thanks. I'm Rudreshwarya Banerjee working under Professor Satish K. Sharma first year student in CSRC. 
My research topic is investigation of a heat sink all metal dual linear polarized phased array antenna for KU band applications. So we have uh, designed a intuitively shaped uh, single element and uh, this radiator is uh, radiated as well as it will work as a heat sink. This is the novelty of this work. So we have a plan to develop a dual polarized uh, single element and a 8 by 8 array using the dual polarized element. Uh, till now we have developed a 8 cross 8 uh, array using a single uh, polarized element and now we are working on the dual polarization. If you want to know more about my research you can see poster number 8. Hello everyone, my name is Ghansham Mishra and I'm working with Dr. Satish Sharma in the Antarine Microwave Lab. Uh, naval ships traditionally use satellite and other maritime radios for ship-to-ship -ship and ship-to-shore communications. However, such communications are often restricted by limited bandwidth and delays. And these naval ships require high data rate to facilitate better coordination during battlefield as well as rescue operations. So what we have proposed is a beam steering antenna technology that is cost effective and energy efficient for this high data rate application. We have been able to reduce the power consumption by 75% as compared to the standard phased array antenna technology. The proposed antenna is analyzed using finite element method and physical optics. We are also fabricating the prototype uh, antenna and will be measuring it in the NAQA chamber here at SDSU. So if you would like to know more about this research and its application, please visit me at poster seven. Thank you. My name is Sydney Arthofer and I'm a second year master's student. I work under Dr. Jose Castillo in the Coastal Ocean Dynamics group, where the general coastal, uh, the general curvilinear coastal ocean model known as GCCOM is being developed. I'm using GCCOM to numerically simulate an internal tide traveling through the La Jolla Submarine Canyon. Submarine canyons are what they sound like. They're just underwater canyons jutting into the coastal shelf and they're sites where there's, that are very nutrient rich and host much more marine life in the surrounding waters. They're very present. They're present in um, about 11 to 20 percent of the world's coasts, but they're understudied because most coastal ocean models don't have a fine enough problem grid size in order to capture canyon details. Using GCCOM, we hope to shed more light onto these important features. I'd love to talk to you about this, so come visit me at poster number 14. Hi everyone, my name is Manuel Valera and I work uh, under Professor Castillo in the Coastal Ocean Dynamics Group. Since uh, three years we started porting our model into Betsy, which is uh, a suite of com computational science developed by Argonne National Labs and we finally uh, have attained full parallelization of the model uh, over 60, uh, over a problem size of 60 million points per variable and 240 processors uh, over 12 nodes. Uh, last year we have uh, validated the physics of the model and with this parallelization we have transported that validation into the HPC world. If you want to see uh, how we did it and uh, what our next steps are, come visit me at poster number 24. Thank you. Hi there. I'm Jared Brzezinski. I'm a second year master's student. I also work with Professor Castillo and my two esteemed colleagues in the Ocean Modeling Group. Uh, from the previous two slides, our ocean model is awesome. Uh, I am more interested in surface waves, uh, which is not a speciality of GCCOM. But like other simulations, if you want to add something to it, uh, you just couple it with another model. Ours is specialized in internal structures. I coupled it with a surface wave model. The interesting part of this comes when you think about the GCCOM that's been distributed over hundreds of nodes of a supercomputer, and you have a shallow water model that could also be distributed across hundreds of nodes. How can you get them to talk to each other and exchange information while both of them are running? If that sounds interesting, I'm poster number one. Thanks. <laughs> 